We're gonna be welding the diff up on the G35. We do have a backup VLSD, just in case I stop liking the drift diff, and that's what I call it, by the way. So we're gonna get to it, and we're gonna go have some fun. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to remove the diff. Um, this will be a quicker video than most on the internet. Basically, there's a 17 millimeter up here that you can reach with one of these. Um, it's kind of a tight squeeze in here, but it works well. It's a 17 on a ratchet. We have 14 millimeters. There's six of them that hold the CV axles to the differential. Then we'll have two 17s here and four 17 millimeters holding the actual drive shaft to the differential. So there will be on this model, it has ABS or uh, traction control. So there is two 12 millimeters right here that will be needing to be removed as well. So I wanted to show you a trick with these real quick. All right, so as you can see, there's 14 millimeters here. We're gonna use two wrenches, both 14s. This one we're gonna have set here, and this one we're gonna have set here. Um, basically what we're going to be doing is turning it to where it wedges up against the frame. Once it's wedged there, you can use a double wrench cheater system is basically what I call it. You can do that and then you will be able to break it loose fairly easy. Now these bolts have already been sprayed with PB blaster so they could sit and soak. As you can see it's kind of wet around there. I highly recommend doing that to make them come off easier. So we're gonna get started getting rid of all these bolts so we can drop the diff out. Alright, before we go any further, there's only three bolts holding this all in. Um, we have two 12 millimeter bolts here that need to be removed. These sensors just pull out. This is for the ABS and the VDC, uh, I believe. But you want to be very careful if you have that still. I have mine turned completely off. I have it to where it's no longer used and doing this to the diff is probably going to mess with it anyway. So we're just going to go ahead and unbolt these, move them out of the way. All right, now that we got the diff out, I made this like makeshift little funnel catch thing so it could actually drain in there. Uh, this is a 10 with a Pittsburgh set. It's an Allen key. We're just gonna impact this. It's probably best to do this while it's still under the car. It'd be a lot easier. And then after we're done with that, we're gonna hit these 14s all the way around. All right, so as you can see, we got it all apart. You can tell it's an open diff by the way this design is. Uh, if it was the VLSD like the other diff, it would have little holes um, in this casing. But since it's got a really big open area, I think that's why they call it an open diff. It also has the little spider gears in there. We're going to make a template out of cardboard first. It's the easiest this route. And we're gonna make it fit in here really snug. And then we're gonna take that cardboard over to a piece of angle iron, cut it out, Make sure there's no rust on it, put it in there, and weld this all solid, and then we will flip it 
like this and do it on that side as well. Afterwards, we'll go through, or before we weld, we'll go through and spray brake clean and clean all this out first. I'm gonna put a little bit of purple power just because it helps degrease really well. And we want a good clean area to bond to. So we're going to let this drain. We're gonna run and go grab some more brake clean and gear oil. And while we're gone, this will be draining. All right, so we're back from Walmart. We got the non-chlorinated brake parts cleaner. You're gonna wanna get the non-chlorinated. It makes a difference. There's reasons, health reasons and whatnot. So let's get started. All right, so I got a piece of cardboard here that we're gonna mock up to see if it fits in here and then we'll take it to the angle iron and cut it out. Um, once we get it to fit Look at that it's almost a perfect fit it Looks like it'll work for me so now we'll take this over the angle iron trace it out and cut it out All right, as you can see I used a paint pen just trace these out. Uh, we're gonna need two one for each side not necessarily need to, but might as well, extra strength. We're just gonna cut this out and cut it in half, and then we're going to make sure there's no exposed, uh, or no rust left, and then it's just gonna have exposed metal. Then we're gonna go put it in there and weld it in. All right, so on cast iron, it's really important to heat up the cast iron around it for the welds to bond better. Um, a lot of people fail to mention this in their videos, but definitely heat up the cast iron around it on these areas because that needs to be warmed up prior to welding. We got them both done. They're down to bare metal. We're just gonna put them in and David's gonna weld it up because I kind of suck at welding. His welds are a little bit better. They're at least stronger, so we'll get started. That's how the diff will work now. Before, the gears just kind of moved inside and out. But now the whole thing spins, so it's like one piece. So we're going to weld the other one, and then we're going to put the diff cover back on and go from there. Okay, so he got it welded. He welded it to the side. Um, he also welded the center plate in. Not the prettiest welds, but they will work. You can see both sides are done. It's spinning is one piece. Make sure to rotate it quite a few times to get any slag out the bottom. Just kind of run your flat head in there and pull anything out. And we're going to put the case back on, cleaned it up, and we're just going to put some uh, gasket seal the ultra black gasket maker around and a lot of people like to read the instructions and do it like the way they they're supposed to but i like to do it the way i do it put it on put it on and bolt it on never has had an issue doing that so i'm just going to do it my way so throw the rule book out All right, so we're gonna fill it up before it goes in the car with some SuperTech 8090 gear lube. Um, it takes one and a half quarts, so one of these plus half of another one. So we're just gonna fill it up until it starts oozing out this hole right here, and then we'll plug it back up. All 
All right, so we got the diff back in, all the bolts are tightened up. We checked it like a hundred times, not literally, but close enough. Um, it, everything looks solid, the wheels are turning together. Don't hear any noises that we shouldn't, so we're gonna go out and test it out and see how the drift diff does. So let's go do that. All right, so we're gonna go take it out for a spin, see if it'll move under its own power. Well, as you can see, it definitely uh, definitely slides way easier than it did before. I wish I would have got it before video, but it's automatic, so it definitely um, has a hard time sliding to begin with. But with that welded diff, it just did great. I prefer the welded diff life. I have no problem driving it in snow, ice, water, whatever. It doesn't really matter to me because I have enough driving experience to know how to drive. But um, a lot of other people might not like it for winter. It does wear your tires out faster, but I wear my tires out faster naturally, so it's not a big deal for me. But uh, yeah, I recommend a welded diff if you wanna have some fun. It's easy to swap it in and out, so it's not a very hard mod. Um, if you really want to, just make sure you have a backup diff just in case you're tired of it, swap it out real quick. Be on your merry way. But um, if you found the video helpful, definitely hit the like button, guys. I appreciate all your shares and your views. Um, I just personally wanna thank you for sticking by the channel and um, we might have a lot more coming soon um, still working on the details but it's pretty big stuff so thanks for watching like subscribe share and stay awesome god bless